Jesus is awesome. We're going to take up an offering. If you're in a position to sow, um, you're more than welcome to give. The Bible says we never come with empty hands. So this morning, even if you can't give, give what you have. Give what you have in your heart. Give Him praise. Give Him... Learn, learn to bring your valuables, whatever is valuable to the Lord. What, what was beautiful out of the, the tribe of Israel is many times they will have to bring their first, always their first, the firstborn, the first of their cattle, the first of their harvest. And it was something that was pleasing and acceptable unto the Lord because you never knew what you get after your first. So one thing we do is when we get something first, we want to hold on to it. Am I right? So learn, guys, when you go out here... Apply the principle. Who, who believes in God's word? Okay, so if you apply the principle, there will always be seed in the house. So anyone that wants to sow, there's a card machine at the back. Here's um, the guys with that. So anyone that's got an offering, you're welcome, or even afterwards. But uh, let's get into the word. So um, who's, who's feeling a bit of pressure at this stage? Is there anyone that's working through a tough time, working through some pressures, so I've titled my message for this morning and for the next few times that I will preach, I'm just going to speak on pressure. Because sometimes we, we believe that when we are pressure, we are under a demonic attack. Who's ever believed nonsense like that? You know, it's the devil that's out there to get us. We've got this whole philosophy of how strong and how awesome and how big the devil is. But we forget that the devil is just part of creation. There's a creator and his name We've, we've come to know him by the name of Jesus. And there's nothing that can overpower him in all of creation. Amen? So if he is for me, who can be against me? Okay, so for who is God in this room? Is there anyone that God says that I'm for you? I don't know about you, but if you haven't fixed it in your heart, he's definitely for me. Why? Because I believe and that saved me. I was brought into his kingdom by the fact that I believed in the salvation of the only Son of God. I believe that he's the only way, the truth and the life. And no one can enter, go to the Father or enter heaven without going through the Son. There's no other way. One way through which man can be saved. Can I get an amen? Okay, so when we, we, we start believing, we put our hope and our trust in one that is unfallible. He doesn't fall. But then we would like to tend to think that everything is just going to be perfect. Now, who, I don't care if your dad was there. Who had a dad? All of us. Okay, JP, you are seem confused. There was someone that laid with your mom. That's why you are here. Okay. Can I see again? Who had a dad? Okay. Irrelevant. If he was good, bad, that's not the, that's not the question. The fact is we all had a dad. And once we had a dad in our life, it didn't mean that everything else ceased. It didn't mean that there wasn't opposition. Some of us are dads today, and we've missed it, and that's even okay. As long as we can get to the point where we can say, Lord, here am I. Help me, change me, and teach me your ways. Amen? So this morning... I want, you to, I want you to open your, your heart as I'm go, we're going to look at prayer. So just look at Psalm 119, verse 71. This is David writing, and he's going through a very difficult time. He was working through personal family issues. Has anyone worked through personal family issues? Now that tends to consume you, am I right? Now imagine this oak is the king of Israel, and his son decides to overthrow the king of Israel. Amen. And all of a sudden, you've got the son that wants to kill his own father because he's looking for inheritance. He thinks he will be a better king. And um, listen at his response towards God. He said, it is good for me that I was afflicted. Say to the guy next to you, it is good that we work through difficult times. It is good that we go through certain pressures. Amen. Say to the guy next to you, it's good that we go through certain pressures. It was good that I worked through this difficult time. It is good that I had this, this season in my life where my children didn't want to speak to me. Okay? Is that the ideal? No. But it is good for us to work through certain stuff because then we can be honest and transparent with God. Listen why. That I might learn your statutes. 
so that I can learn to understand who you are, Lord. Who's this God that I'm calling out to? Who's this King of kings and Lord of lords? So when it is good, Lord, that I had the sickness in my body, because now I know who's the God that heals it. It is good, Lord, that I've been broke in my life. We're not poor, guys. When we come into the kingdom, you can never be poor because you have obtained the richest thing in your life. It's Jesus. So you can be broke here this morning, but you can never be poor. Big difference, ne, Ben? Big difference. Very big difference. So that we can learn your statues. The law of your mouth is better to, to me than the thousands of gold and silver pieces. Now, this is not only... In flirting with God. You know what's one of the things that I like the most about the Bible is how God flirts back with people. I tells them, yes, man, you're just the apple of my eye. I think you're beautiful. You're such a gorgeous guy. Man, you are be strong and courageous. Have you ever felt, I remember when Joshua was a baby. He's not here today. My wife went over his chest. She, she put um, cream on him. And he would put that chest out like that. You know, and then she says, oh, you're a brie boar, son. It's like, I pronk. Okay? I pronk. Okay, so that's, that's how God makes us feel. I like your biggie pronk. I mean, you get me. So, the, the big question here today is that there's a promise in the word that the Lord says that He will never tempt you beyond your ability. He also says that He'll never put you in a position that you can't overcome. So many times we are weak and we fall short. And we disbelieve, but it's not because we couldn't do it. Guess what? There's nothing in your life that you can't overcome. Everything, otherwise God has given you this unfair advantage. There's nothing that happened in your life that God's not about to restore. But it's for those who believe. I want to tell you, if God's putting you in the lion den, He's going to shut the lion's mouth. If He's putting you in the fiery furnace, He's going to let you come out and you don't even smell like smoke. If he puts Pharaoh behind you and you come to the, to the Red Sea, guess what? He's going to break open the seas. So he opens up that which is impossible, he does. But then we must understand that it doesn't mean that there's no pressure. I want to tell you, for that guy going into the fiery furnace, there was a hell of a lot of pressure. For that guy that's gone through the, into the lion's den, it was intimidating. I mean, can you imagine... You go and sit with Simba, in, and you're going to have a conversation. And, the, and that oak is hungry. That's a huge problem. Whenever you sit with a lion that's hungry, <laughs> you don't want to have too, too much conversation, unless God is part of it. There were some oaks finding themselves on a, in a storm, and God will walk on the water. Or he'll just speak to the storm and just calm the storm. Think of these things. So when you learn, you don't know how much pressure or how much weight you can bear unless you go into a test that does give you a testimony. So you won't know. You won't know your abilities unless it is exploited. Amen? You need to understand that, that you need to discover yourself. God knows you. He knows you like the palm of His hand. But you need to Understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Because that's something totally different. So very soon, you will get yourself where you run into something that you've never ran into before. So when you go into something, let's take Drikus, Duplessis. Hello, weet nie wat ons weet nie. Okay? We all know now who's Drikus. Did you watch the fight? Okay. So let's take Drikus Duplessis. Dr he had to get into the, uh, the ring with a world champion so that he could be rated on a higher standard. But unless he gets into the ring with the world champion, he will just be a figure. He will don't know what his capacity is really about. And you don't know, maybe it's like Rocky Baba, who's ever watched the Rocky movie. He, he starts off, then he becomes lazy, then he gets a hiding, and then he needs to make his this recovery. It's always the same story. Dun, 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 runs up the stairs, up and down, does that, go beat the, 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 the cows in the fridge, please don't beat my cows in the fridge when, you, when they come, okay? That oak had to learn to work under pressure. And every time he got some circumstances in his life, he had to grow beyond it. 
Am I right? So circumstances is not there to limit you. It's there to show you the way up. It's there to tell you, listen, you're about to make it. You're about to write something new for a king. All of us has been rated for a certain amount of pressure. So you are known. Who knows that the, the, even the devil knows us. That's why when you, when you meet the familiar spirit, they can tell you exactly what went on. But they only know you by your previous pressures. This oak. You put a line in front of him, and I focus a paper clip. You put a cherry, with a few clothes in front of him. That guy's not going to make it. Huh? I want to tell you, no, things are about to change. And we mag ons achter ende gesing het, but we are changing. Constant change is here to stay. We are here to say, Lord, not through power, not through might, but through your spirit. We've got a, a desire, Lord, let it be. So I don't know where you've been rated, but you've been rated somewhere in the spirit, okay? Let me explain. If you go to the gym and you start off with those 15 kgs and you look in the mirror until the guy with the 45s walk in, you are the big guy, okay? And you stand there. It means your muscles have been rated. Its ability is 15 kgs. But guess what? You can grow anything in life. You can grow your spirit, man. You can grow, grow your expectation. You can grow your business. So there's a point where something bursts in our life. So there's a certain pressure where things come in our lives, and then it pops. Has anyone popped out in life? Man, you were going good. You had this great Golf GTI, just bought it, and then the TV is to come if you laugh. Anyone that's done something like that? <laughs> okay? Flip it. Just got married, great wife, beautiful, and the next moment the baby appears and all of a sudden the wheels come off. That's what happens. That's just real life. So there's a place that you are right and there's a place that you used to pop out, but imagine the God of your salvation is telling you, I'm going to strengthen you so that you learn to stick through in difficult times, to go beyond those places where people thought you can't, can't do it. People are observing you and they say, listen, you, you, Wayne, you're a part of the pop oh, and you say, no ways, man. New, every level's got a new devil. This is easy. And then you do great, and that thing goes all the way to three bar. And on three bar, there's a pop. Amen? Then you go good, and at eight bar, there's a pop. Guess what? You'll never arrive. But that's why we have to lean on the Lord. It doesn't mean we have to fall back every time. The problem with many people is we think that once we've got a character flaw, we need to go back all the way and disappoint everyone all again. Instead of just standing up and saying, Lord, thank you. I've recognized this one now. Please help me with this. This is where I need your, your attention. This is what I need to focus on. So, we are many times, we are religious. So, the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So faith comes by what? Hearing the word of God. Why do we need to go to church? Why do we need to spend time in the word? Because that's where you discover how much pressure you can take. Because if God's been faithful to Abraham, is he going to be faithful to you? Yes, he was faithful for David standing in front of a giant. Guess what he's going to do for you? He's going to make you overcome giants. Is that the same God we are talking about? He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Now, while Paul is writing this letter in the book of Romans, he's under house arrest. And we're going to look at some of the pressures that he to, had to go through. It was not an easy time for Paul in his life. He wrote this while he was imprisoned. There was a time, let's go look at, at, at some of the things that happened. 2 Corinthians 11.24, remember now, this is the pastor. This oak is not smoking, he's not drinking, he's not using drugs, he doesn't even have machochas. He's a straight walker. And look at them. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the 40 lashes less one. Who, who can say they had five hidings in their life? I'm not talking about getting a pox law with a plonky. I'm talking about 39 lashes 
Supposed to be 40, but just in case they make a mistake, it's 39. Who's ever had 39 shots on your butt? And now we're not even talking about your butt. We're talking about your backside. That's what Jesus got. This oak says, I follow Jesus. Then I go and preach, man, God is good. Man, Jesus loves me so much. You need to get this Jesus in your life. And the next moment they take him and they give him a beating. And guess what? He doesn't go and feel sorry for himself. So he gets back up. And he keeps on going with his confession. So he gets another lashing for believing what he's believing. And then he sits and he says, Lord, we have to have a conversation. I can't get this hiding the whole time. People can't treat me like this. People can't tell me I'm, I'm still like I was back then. People can't ignore me. People can't just talk down to me, Lord, I'm going back to drugs. No. For the third time, he stands up, he says, I'm going to take another lashing. Because I'm not going to keep quiet of what I believe. I'm not going to back off. I'm going to keep to my confession. This is the type of character. Remember, suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. This is the type of character that you want under pressure. Saying, listen here, this is my fifth time, my fifth time I'm coming. And I'm, un- um, I'm not fairly treated. I'm getting a hiding based on what I believe. Not even what I did wrong. Don, do you believe that? Okay. I know the church is hot, but we're going to work through this one. Three times I've been beaten with rods. Who's ever went to, to bush school? Where you had to fight your friends with the, with the rods? Anyone? Uh, we don't have Africans in here. What did you do? Yeah, not in felt school, no? I'm talking about where the black boys go when they are 13, they get circumcised. Is there anyone that's been there? Uh, we've got boys in here. Yeah. So there are three times I was beaten with rods. When you get into that crate and you have to fight another guy your age, it's to see who's going to respect you, am I right? Now you are forcing down your respect. Now yeah, he says three times I've received it with rods. Can you imagine... What a beating this guy got. Once I got stoned, I read this last, last week as well. Three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in danger in rivers, in dangers of robbers, dangers from my own people, dangers from Gentiles, dangers from the cities, dangers from wilderness, dangers at sea, dangers at false brothers. In toil and hardship through many sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure, And apart from the other things, there is also the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. So let's just pause there. So he's going through this whole list of all these troubles that he's going through. And guess what he's concluding it on? He's not saying I've got anxiety because my mother is not calling or my brother doesn't approve of what I'm doing or I've got my ex Guys, that's not why we have sleepless nights. You know what he's saying why he has sleepless nights? The reason why he's got sleepless nights is because he's got a desire to see the kingdom of God come into fulfillment. That's why he feels anxious, because he cannot see one, one go lost. You know what God wants you to do? He doesn't want you just to go out and be a law-abiding citizen, and now you're this awesome guy, and everyone praises you. He wants you to go out and go and save your buddy. He wants you to have a testimony so that your own brother will come in and say, listen here, I want what he's having. He wants you to be a testimony out there that people will say, surely God is alive. We've known that guy. We've seen what he's done. He stole my money. And guess what? I forgave him. That's what we want, isn't that? What are we laboring for? What is our expectancy when we come to to church? So, This whole story in Acts 16 is one of the most beautiful stories. And they went through the region of um, Pergia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak a word in Asia. Ever been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak? And when they had come to Mystia, they attempted to go to, to Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So let's just pause here. So passing by Mystia, they went down to Troas, And having a vision appeared to Paul in the night, a man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When Paul saw saw the vision, he immediately, when he saw, went to Macedonia, concluding that God had called him to preach the gospel there. I want to point you something out today. 
Once you get saved, people are asking me, I'm not sure if I should go and do something. How can you tell me you were dead, but now you're alive, but you don't know you should go and do something? How can you tell me that you cannot be thankful for the God that brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light? Okay? Now, what Paul is saying here is the following. If you read the, the portion, basically what it's co concluding down to is he was looking to go into Asia. He was looking to go into Mama Lori. He was looking to go into Durban. He was looking to go to Joburg to go and preach this gospel. And then from time to time, there was never a time where he stopped wanting to go. So people will tell me, no, man, I, I don't want to go. I don't want to. I want to tell you, you don't have a choice. Because you are a testimony of God's goodness and kindness. While you have breath, you are a vessel which God wants to use. The Spirit says, whom shall I send? Whom shall go? And they replied, hear him, our Lord, use me. That's what the Bible says. Who does God want to use? He wants to use you. The one with the worst background, the most unlikely guy, the Gideon of the family, and he's saying, be strong and courageous. I'm, I'm going to put my spirit upon you, and people will say, surely God is alive. That's what God says here. But listen now, Paul wasn't looking for an excuse not to go. The Spirit stopped him. You should go. You can't take the go out of God. Two-thirds of God's name says go. You can't take the go out of gospel. Amen? Go. Paul. Gospel. Okay? And what I, what I really believe is that when God doesn't want you to go, He will tell you not to go. Un unless God is telling you not to go, what should you do? Well, we don't want you to be able to remember just the previous, mess, the previous verse I read. God stopped him and he said, don't go into Asia. Now all of a sudden he's gone to Asia. Listen, well, we don't want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experience in Asia. So who wants to go and tell people about the goodness of God? Is there anyone? Yes, everyone in here should raise their hands now because we've got a story to tell. Here's what's going to happen when you start telling your story. You're going to experience some kind of affliction. You're going to get opposition. You're going to come under pressure. And then your character will pro prove where to you, you will run. You're either going to run to that which is familiar. You're going to run that to that which is the promise of everything that we hold. Amen? So let's hear him out. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength. Who's ever felt like that, that you don't have the power to do this? I mean, when you came into Ark, Bosi, I can't do me. Yeah, you can. can do. We can do all things. Listen, yeah? Utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. We are going to talk. Who's ever been in, in CI and it's hot? think, I, oh God, I'm going to die. Okay? Yeah. Not a nice place then. Indeed, we felt that we had to receive the sentence of death. Who's ever felt like, man, this is a death sentence? Okay? The children come and drop you at Ark. Your family drops you at Ark. We come and fetch you. <laughs> it feels... Ah, Jada? Hey, hey, felt like we received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raised the dead. All of a sudden, he's changing his whole approach. He says, even when I get to that point where I feel that I have to die, 
It said that I would not lean on my own strength, but I will trust on God that raised the dead. Look at the approach. doesn't matter what's coming my way. I'm going I'm to look to God. I don't care if the doctor's saying to me, you've got this sickness, you've got that. While I've got breath, man, there's nothing that anyone can do to my spirit. While I have breath, I'm going to preach in every place. I'm not going to run away from Rayton Clinic. I'm going to preach at Rayton Clinic. You know what? I, get, I need preachers there. Guys, I, I need people to run less and to start preaching. What if you've got the opportunity, you've got a whole crowd that's sitting there. Only thing that they can maybe do is they can add some medication to your, to your visit and say, like, this guy's, like, clinically definitely not right. He's speaking about a Jesus that's healing the, this. I mean, what's the worst that they can do to us, really? Come on, let's be honest. Know what I need? I need people that feels like, listen, yeah, I'm dying, but I'm sitting there at Dr. Mark's room, and I'm going to pray for the sick. Guess what? I've been sick in... My, I didn't get healed myself, but I laid my hand on others and they got healed. How significant isn't this Jesus that we serve? He delivered us from such a deadly peril and He will deliver us. On Him we have set our hope that He will deliver us again. Isn't that beautiful? Someone should get a tattoo like that. Listen to these words again. A tattoo like that. Uh, you need to become 40 to get it. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us. Isn't that beautiful? Delivered me in the past. Guess what? He's always going to deliver me. But as you don't understand, I've been divorced. Get out of the hole. You don't understand. My family threw me away. So did Joseph's family. But Matthias, you don't understand. I ended up in a position where people treated me un unjustly. Guess what? The Bible is full of stories like that. If you're waiting for people to treat you justly so that you can be just, you've, got it, you've missed the mark. You need to stand up. You need to become the answer. On Him we have set our hope that, we, that He will deliver us again. Man, I want that. Look at the picture behind me. Who likes diamonds? They say men come and go, but diamonds last forever. As long as he puts her one carrot down there, they can come and go. Am I right, ladies? No. <laughs> it's the wrong answer. But we do like diamonds. Yeah. No. Diamonds does not last forever. That's just what the beers told us. Now diamonds got, gets formed. Pleasure. You can either stay a piece of charcoal or you can go and allow that 725,000 bar of pressure gets onto you. And it puts you in such an uncomfortable position that something starts forming in you. Now a pole gets formed by irritation. It is when uh, the, what's it, the scope, what do you call it, the, the clam. And it takes in a piece of sand and it starts irritating. And it will start giving off a certain substance that becomes the pill. So we think, you open that clam, you think, what a beautiful pill. Just look at it. No, what a hell of an irritation. Thank God you've just relieved me. It's like having kidney stones for that pill or for that clam. Amen? We want perfect circumstances so that we can praise God. Yet, we adore the fact that people can go through pressure and they can stand up. Guys, if there's ever a room of testimony, do you know where's the only place that's got more testimony than what we have here? Please, someone tell me. Hey? Graveyard. The only place I know with more potential, that should have had more potential than what we have here today is the graveyard. You know what potential means? It means untapped power. It's something you didn't use. It means it's something that you could have been, but you weren't. You can be a potentially good dad. No, man, be a good dad. You can be a potential good disciple of Jesus. No, be a disciple of Jesus. Let's become what God has said. If God has said it over our lives, you still have breath. Guess what you do have? Got the opportunity. 
that means that there's going to be tremendous pressures that's going to shape you. It's not always going to be easy. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he falls. So this is a warning that Paul's writing to the church of Corinthians. No temptation has overtaken you that is common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Maria, hey bro, this is a prophetic promise. But he's saying, you can be tempted here today. You can be tempted in many ways. While our flesh is weak, but now we are busy training our flesh. Am I right? I want to ask something. Let's, can, can we for one moment just be honest? Okay, forget that anyone. Who's learned to make their beds at Ark? It's a good thing. So think about it. There was times, a time in your life that there was no discipline. I want to say to you, there's some people that learned that it is, you need to shower every freaking single day. Amen? There's some people that has learned that you need to brush your teeth. And it's not a bad thing, guys. You know what this is this saying? God is busy taking us through certain things. When you're going to be on the outside, this is a very safe environment. When you go on the outside, you're going to be tempted. The Bible says God is not mocked. He doesn't tempt anyone. You are tempted by your own selfish desires. So guess what? If you can lay yourself down looking for his face, then temptation will not really be of any effect. Who, guess what? Who was tempted as well? Jesus. And he was tempted by the devil himself. And he was asked questions like, if you are really the son of God. I mean like, come on, let's be real. You're talking to the son of God. He knows it's the son of God. If you are really. Guess what he was trying to do? He was trying to question if Jesus really knew who and what he was. What do you mean if? And I'm not the son of God. I'm the beloved son of God. That's what God, just the previous chapter, God said, he's my beloved son. Now the devil's asking, if you are the son. I'm not only a son, I'm beloved. Why? Why is it necessary to fix these things? Because if I know I'm loved by the father, it's not just being a son. All of us are sons, am I right? Have you ever been a beloved? Who's ever seen my tattoo at the back here? Beloved. Why? Because I need to remind myself. I'm his beloved. Not anything. I'm his beloved. He chose me before I chose him. He sold out on me. I'm the apple of his eye. The plans that he has for me is to prosper me. To make me succeed. There's nothing that w that's coming my way that God has not prepared us already. And even in my weak times where I fail and I turn to him, he's still faithful. That's the God that we serve. That's the Lord that we are looking towards, which we are turning to in e every situation. No temptation has ever overtaken you that is common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. Guys, whatever is in front of you, you can overcome. Whatever happened in your family, God's going to help you to succeed. You might not see the results today. You might only see it in 10 years' time, but you don't stop doing good. You don't stop trusting God. I mean, there's Wimnik, Wimnik. You, you are ready for your program. Have you been restored with your, your children? Not yet. But it's going to happen. I can tell you one thing. That's about to happen. And there's going to be a testimony. We're going to hold on to our confession. Okay? Does it mean that it has already happened? No. What does it mean? It means that we're not going to stop trusting God because He made a promise. He said He's going to do it. Who of you had word? Who of you are trusting God for health? Who of you are trusting God for a breakthrough in your circumstances, in your families? Okay, yes. Let's just quickly see. Who got touched earlier? Who felt the hand of the Lord upon their bodies as we prayed for the sick? I could immediately feel there was something I trusted the Lord for. I could immediately feel the Lord touch it. Guess what? No one laid their hands on me. It's not through power nor through might. It's not through the hands of man. It's God that is active in his creation because he's faithful towards his word. And when we call him out on his word, he will always honor his word. 
Amen. Let's continue. We are nearly finished. So to keep me from becoming con conceited, excessively proud of oneself in vain. Okay, so before I become, before, this is Paul writing, he says, before I came to this point where I think that I've made it, I've arrived. Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited, becoming proud. Three times I pleaded to the Lord about this, that it should leave me. Now let's just pause here. Who's asked the Lord for something just to go away? Yes, I want to tell you something. This is Paul. This is the super apostle according to us. He didn't think he was. He, he called himself the least of all. But if in hindsight we can say this is the one guy that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He was really in service of God. And he said, he came to the place where there were so many things happening. Man, he lays his hands on the sick. The sick gets, there's a guy falling from a balcony, breaks his neck. He's dead. He goes and prays for the dead guy. That's after he had church the whole night through. And we complain because of an hour or two. Guess what? And then he preached this gospel. He goes, he lays his hand on the sick and the sick gets healed. And then he thinks to himself, man, God likes me so much. I'm, I'm a bit of God's gift to man. You know what God does? He allows him to have some sort of thorn in the flesh. And we are unsure. Some people say it was people, it was the Juda Judaizers. Other people believe he had a physical illness or something. I mean, um, um, Francois, maybe that's a thorn in the flesh. But just think about this this morning. Yeah, we, we've got Paul saying, listen, here, something happened in his life and he, he had to come back so that he, and he calls it so that he would not become arrogant. I want to tell you, once you get out of this place, the last thing you ever need to get is arrogant. Everyone's going to tell you, yes, check it to like you know, Jock. Shoo! It's a big deal. Check your muscles out. Check it out. You're right for a woman, bro. You're the best thing to get out of your People are going to sing. There's a hond here binnen. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> Did a hond. Huh? Okay. Leave right on hand open. So hear me out. So before he came to the point where he said, now I'm the man of God for this hour. God allowed something to happen. I just heard the other day that T.D. Jakes, I love T.D. Jakes, by the way. And I heard that something happened now. And he's being accused of very, very nasty things. I think to myself, but that is the guy that's at this stage, the epic of manhood in Christianity. He speaks out for men. And yet now there's this thing against him. I'm just contemplating if D.D. Jakes is not just maybe also a man. And all men can fail. Am I all right? I mean, if I think that I can't fail, I can promise you I'm, I, I still fail. I fail many times. And I have to go and sit and say, man, Jesus, here am I. Once again, it's me, Lord. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Huh? Who's done it? Yeah, he's like, weer, he's like, weer. With my red dog for your dear. Okay, but, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Guess what? God is not boasting on what great guy you are and how you've succeeded and how you've become this diamond because of all this pressure. That's what I was going to use you. He's going to come and say, listen, your boot, you stay weak, you stay meek. Not stay a drug addict, not stay somebody that's stealing your stuff. But no, become this man of God. And when you're that man of God, then you stay close and say, Lord, it's not through my power. I recognize you. Lord, help me to stay humble and meek. Help me not to think that I'm more than you say I am. See, it's once you become this guy, I was also once just a boy without a future and God gave me privileges to preach all over the world and you know what then God said to me he would allow you to become something great in one season and he'll ask you to walk away from it because it should never become your identity and he just tells you listen here come and sit on my lap once again you know what the season that I'm going in this, in this season I'm just going to sit on my daddy's lap I'm just going to sit and say Lord here am I 
speak to my heart. Give me fresh vision. Help me to deal with these things in my heart. Help me, Lord, to, to deal with past mistakes and failures and people that did me wrong and people that I did wrong. Amen? It's not a bad place to be. It's a good place to recognize and to say, Lord, but it's your grace that is sufficient because your power is made perfect and I recognize that I'm weak. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weakness so that the power of Christ might rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamities. For when I'm weak, I'm strong. I want to prepare your heart this morning. Once you go out here, you might be reminded of your past and what you've done. People might have a grudge against you, and in the spirit of the moment, when they are angry, they might even call you things, which is hurtful. And you must always be able to remind yourself of what has God said about you. You must be able to remind your own heart of what God has achieved in you. You must be able to stand up and say, but look all things on you. That's why the poor say that they are strong. That's why the weak say. That's why the the poor say they are rich, the weak say they are strong, the sick say that they are healed. Lesbians say, Lord, you've healed my heart. The battered person can come to God and say, Lord, you've healed me. The adulterer can come to God and say, Lord, you've forgiven me. That's how we come close to the cross and know He is still the same. But it's when we go through certain pressures in our life, that we start reaching out to others. You don't have a story unless you've gone through pressure. And unless you've really went through that test and made it, you're going to struggle to, to preach to others, and to tell others about God's goodness. Now let's look at Jesus. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful. This is Jesus, to death. Remain here and watch with me. This is what he's asking his friends. He's asking his friends just to stay awake with him because he knows he's going to die now. And remember, he had no sin. And now he's sitting in the point in a garden where he's praying and he's spending time with God and he's bleeding so intense is the pressure upon him because he's bearing the sin of the whole world. And he needs to say, listen here, I'm going to take Matthias' sin. I'm going to take Robert's sin. I'm going to take Yaku's sin. I'm going to take Werner's sin. I'm going to take one sin, Philly sin. This is what the promise is. And here Jesus is saying, my soul is sorrowful. The Son of God saying, my soul is in a place where it feels burdened, even to death. He's asking his friends, please stay with me. Do you ever ask someone to stay up with you, to stand by you, to go with you? And going a little further, he fell on his face and he prayed, saying, my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass me. Nevertheless, not as I will, Dad, but as you will. Dad, not my will. It's asking God to relieve him from this burden. If there's any other way, if we can, if we can set things straight by just giving 10,000 cattle, please, Dad, just do that. I don't want to go through this, but if there's no other way, I still want to go through your pressure. I want to walk your road because I trust you. Guess what his dad did? He saw no other way to save you and to get you on the straight and narrow. He saw no other way in getting things right except by killing his son for your mistakes. Setting you right, his son had to pay the price. There's no other way Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. It feels so good when someone tells you that. But if you really understand the implication of that pressure, so He's going to walk the line so that He can take away your cancer, that He can take away your depression, that He can take away your sickness, that He can take away your addiction, that He can take away the whole of every label of sin that's been placed upon you since your birth. He says, I do not count anything against you, ever. But 
But that is what happens if I make mistakes in the future. It's been eradicated. But then I can just go on sinning. If, if I'm already forgiven, man, let me just go and, go and you. No, then you don't understand what God has really paid for. It's to understand what the price was. And then to take the best out of it. So let's read. And he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, the rock, the one on which the church was going to be built. So could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. You need to pray that when you come under pressure, you're going to stand it. You're going to make the test. Why do we pray? We pray so that we have relationship because we know our Father. Our hearts feel warm and we know that He hears us. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. I've, I've known many of you boys. I've known you from the past. Some guys I've walked it out before. Man, such great spirit. I've never met any guy in here which I don't think is top quality. I told Sophisa the other day, if he's running for president, I'm voting for him. Good lucky, up for president, man. I'm his first candidate. I'm going to just say, that's my president. Amen. Why? Because I believe I've got men with integrity. I believe we've got men. I don't care about the color of your skin. I care about your integrity. I don't care where you come from. If you come from what background, I care about your integrity. You know what he's doing here? He's asking his friend to stand with him. He can't stand with him. Then he tells his friend, well, you need to pray because you're going to enter into a temptation. You're going to go through a spirit, through, through, through a pressure. And you might be willing. Your spirit is very willing. But you might just find yourself, if you're not praying, that you find yourself that your flesh is weak. Oh, pastor, I'm, I'm ready. I'm going out there. I'm totally ready. Yanni always say, if you want to play in Saturday's game, go and ask the coach. Come and ask Yanni. Yanni, do you think I'm ready? No. I still want you to work on this. No, man, I'm ready. Based on what? Based on what? You know how long the disciples walked with Jesus? Let's just be honest. Three and a half years. That's how long they walked with Jesus. Intimately with Jesus. And then on the night when Jesus was betrayed, one of the oaks still pulled his knife and he cut off a guy's ear. Bam. I won't. If that was my disciple, I would flip and say, niks geleer nie, boot. Come on, let's be real. What have you learned? Cut off a guy's ear. Jesus like, puts it back. Amen. But it is willing. I want to say to you, I've got so many willing spirits in here. So why are we in training? Because the flesh is weak. So why are we training the flesh? How do you train the flesh? Don't tell me you sit on the couch and you're going to have muscles. If you want to have muscles, enter into the gym on top there. Okay? If you want to get your character sorted out, guess what? Come under pressure. Say, Yanni, I'm reporting. I want to make myself accountable on a new level. The other guys get up at six. You guess what? I'm, I'm going to get up at four. I'm going to spend time with the Lord before anyone else. Then I want to make sure that everyone else's room is clean because my room will be clean first. Now we are leading. Okay? That's character. Yanni, please give me a responsibility. Give me something. Give me, the, give me a car. I will make sure that that thing is in top notch and I will make sure that the, it's pleasing and acceptable unto the Lord because we don't do things on the eye pleasing. Yanni, can I please take up this responsibility? I want to just say, Yanni, give me one Francois or give me this. Guys, you know what? You go and report. And then you don't feel insecure when you get confronted, when you get measured because you're being, you, you're being grown. If you're the most disciplined guy in here, you'll go out reaping the greatest rewards. So you don't want to just be another average. You want to become a diamond. You want to allow pressure to form you. You want to allow things to come into you and say, listen, your Lord, I'm ready for this thing. I'm not going to, another one eats the dust. Three months out there, another one eats the dust. I've already planned my all. I, I want to tell you something. You never, ever have to relapse. Never, ever. I come around, how many guys I go and fetch? I come around all of their drugs. I don't need to go and relapse. It's a choice. But you know what's the difference? We start saying, Lord, but you can use me. 
told you earlier, don't get arrogant and say, listen, yeah, I'm the standard. Because I might just be the next one that falls. But in the process, I'm saying, Lord, I'm willing. And I'm seeking after you. See, this morning, it's not about how far you have succeeded. It's about the heart. Here, Jesus, he's going through a certain suffering. But his character stood through. Why? Because he spent time with the Father all, all the time. Again, for a second time, he went away and he prayed, My Father, this cannot pass unless I drink it. Your will be done. Father, I'm going to do this. I pray for your will. And then his will comes and then we are angry. We say, but Lord, my, my parents just treated me unfairly. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I'm just going to have a smoke. I'm just going to use something to feel better. I want to tell you, it's time to shift our minds and say, Lord, I want to be pleasing and acceptable to you. If everyone else gives up on me, I'm going to seek the Lord in the land of the living. Surely he's got a plan with my life. And if he has called it, then it's impossible for me to fail. Even when I struggle, I stand up in him because my focus is on him. On what you put most of your focus is where you'll see the best results. Make sense? Wherever you spend most of your time, your mind, your mind is just spending time getting out of here. You're not busy helping yourself. It's getting your mind. Have you heard the coach tell you, Kry jou kop in die game. Church, we need to get our head in the game. Get your head in this game. How? And Lord, I don't, I don't know why I'm working through this thing, but I'm going to go through it. I'm seeking you. And people, who wants to get a husband? Only one girl. Praise the Lord. Two girls. Okay. Well, get a husband, flip, you get pressure. Okay? Who wants a wife? <laughs> Ek nie gevra wie wil spyker nie, ek gevra wie soek een vrou. <laughs> Sorry vir die termologie. Wie soek een vrou? Ja. Okay. Yeah. That's new pressures. Sorry? Gebruik een term, maar jy allemaal weet wat ek daarby bedoel. Guess what? New pressure. Lord, now we want a baby. You know, guess what? <laughs> new pressure. Give me a job. Oh, just be faithful. Give me this nice job. Now I get this job. I've, I've had people here that's not here today. It's forgiven. That's not here for day, today. I started with them off with a job with 35,000. So I went to the boss. I said, listen, yeah, I'm going to ask you a favor. Put 10,000 rand away for them in an extra account. Don't give them that much money in the beginning. Put it away for them and then we buy them a car. So that the person will grow with it. Amen. It's not that I'm taking from them. You ask for something, you ask for a job, you ask for a ministry, you ask for a marriage, you ask for friendship. That's going to cause pressure in your life. Then you need to know, where do you run to when you are under pressure? I'm not going to speak on that. Luke 8, 43. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. How many years? Whose addiction is older than 12 years? She had an issue for 12 years. Spoke to some people that said to them, me, their addiction is as, as, as long as some people's age. 24 years, 30 years. I mean, that's just meaning you're going around the mountain for many, many years. I mean, many, many moons ago. Yeah. This woman for 12 years had a discharge and she spent all of her finances on drugs. She spent all her money on Gold Valley. She spent all her money on doctors. It's no difference. The reality is she was broke. Can you see it? So there came a day where she heard that Jesus is coming to town she came up behind him and she was pressing between the crowds. Remember now, she had a discharge of blood, which means that she was um, uh, unclean for seven days at least. 
But the problem was that the blood wasn't going away. So she was constantly unclean. And now she's unlawfully, she's breaking all the rules. Now she's going to touch the most cleanest thing in the whole world. I think that's selfish. Because once you touch something that is clean, it becomes unclean. Unless you touch Jesus. So in the Old Testament, any clean thing that got touched by something that was unclean made it unclean. But in the New Testament, any unclean thing that touched Jesus becomes clean. The whole rule has changed. So everyone was like, would have said, no, no, you can't let this Jerry come close to our Jesus. No, this is our Messiah. Don't let her come close. And guess what? Jesus is just walking, waiting for her to press through and to come for the touch. And he knows she's coming. I want to believe that he was on a, quite a walk and then all of a sudden he started walking a bit slower. Catch up with me, girl. He's not going to her. Guess who's coming to him? The girl with the issue of blood. So when you see a girl in the Bible, guess who it's referring to? The church. The church is the resemblance of a woman in the Bible. And we see this girl, Jesus is not necessarily coming to her, but after 12 years, with other words, in full governance, the number 12 means government. Even in full government, she still did not get any healing. Not through a physician, not through a man, not through power, not through might, not out of her own ability. She spent all and everything that she had, and she came to a place where she said, I'm so broke, I've got nowhere to go. The only thing I can go is I can go and touch the cleanest thing that I've heard. Just maybe God can touch me in her best effort on the worst day of her life. She reached out to Jesus, and when she touched him, he touched her. And everyone's like, he said, I presume some power went out of me. Nobody even knew that he touched her because when God touches people, it doesn't need to be a public display. It doesn't need to be a public spectacle. It needs to be someone that is sincere saying, Lord, I'm in dire straits and I'm going to pull through this pressure for 12 years, but I'm not going to quit and I've heard you coming to town, so I'm going to come and touch you because I know that when I touch him, that's the only chance that I have. I've tried everything else. And in her belief, she touched the promise of God. She believed something so stupid, so unreal, so unnatural. I mean, to think that you can touch something's rope, it's not even touching his flesh. She touched the fringe of his garment. I don't even have clothes to do that. It's like touching that portion of his, of his dress, the thing he was wearing, his rope. And he touched it, she touched it, and she got healed. And I'm like, Lord, I know that they've prayed for things and they've sent it out. I want to say to you this morning, if the heart is, when you can sincerely come in front of God today, knowing that everything that you've tried has passed, and you can make with Him, you can go and say, Lord, this is between me and you. I really need a touch from you. I need to reach out to you, Lord. I've got this thing in my, in my heart. I've got this sickness. I've had this problem for so many years. But I'm sincere, Lord. I want to come and touch you. I want to make a promise to you today that God will hear from heaven and heal your land. He will hear what you say. The Bible says, the eyes of the Lord goes through and forth upon this earth, seeking out those individuals whose hearts is uncompromisingly upon Him. Lord, I don't care what I'm going to go through. I don't care if they're going to stone me. I don't care if my family is coming back. I don't care if I'm going to get healed. I'm just going to go and touch you. I want to touch you. This morning, I made an invitation. I'm quite tearful. I made an invitation. I said, guys, get into the river. Jump in. Seek Him with all your heart and see what He does for you. They might call you schizophrenic. God's calling you whole. You might be labeled, you might be hurt, you might be imprisoned by the fact that you got hurt 
through rape or hurt by any means. But if you've got that ability, you turn your eyes to Jesus, surely he can change your lot. If he can put a black man in a prison for the most of his life, or planting a bomb, wanting to kill people, then come out and make him a president. It's the story of Joseph. So when I got the opportunity, I could have killed my brothers, and he didn't. Imagine what will happen in our country if someone in Ark maybe just turn and say, Lord, here am I, use me. I want to see our first lady president. I want to see someone that looks like me, is full of tattoos, becoming president of a country. I want to see someone stand up and become one of the greatest businessmen and he drives in with buses and he donates because he's believed and God has done something so significant in his life that he can't go past. He believed in the work of God. So he will start financing things. That person is sitting right here today. There's people that's sitting here that needs to go to nations and preach the gospel and see souls get win. But it will only happen because people are desperate and saying, Lord, I'm over my excuses. I'm over myself. I'm going to stop feeling sorry for myself. Guys, it will happen because you say, Lord, here am I, touch me. So let's go. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for this. Jesus said, who was this who touched me? And all denied it. And Peter said, Master, you don't understand. Everyone is touching you. Everyone is pressing against you. No, you can come and be right next to Jesus. You can come onto this program. Never get touched. You can walk and be in church every single day. Unless you know, it's the Lord calling you. Remember when young Samuel was called? Eli said to him, next time you hear that voice, say, Here my Lord, speak to me. Maybe it's not a dream. Maybe you've not missed it. Maybe it's God that's really speaking to you. But Jesus said, someone touched me, for I perceive that power has gone out, of, out from me. Have you ever drawn close to God with such intensity and desire that heaven's greatest gift could not deny you? Have you ever pulled near to God with such a desire and such a hunger because of your circumstances that you refuse that it can be anything else than God promises in His Word? And then God beats up and He delivers. Is there any such person in here? Let's close our eyes. This morning, I don't know where you've come from. I don't know what you've been through. You came into this place and you've never given your heart to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is just resting upon you right now. You feel moved in your heart to say, Lord, I want to become a son of God. I want to follow you. I want to pursue you. I want to be that girl that presses through. Never given your heart to Jesus. This morning, I want to ask you just there where you are to stand up. To say, Lord, here am I. I want to make right of you. Best thing you will ever do in your life. Everyone needs to do it at some day, some stage. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not accepted the Lord. It's the day. This is the day of salvation. I want you to stand up and say, Lord, here am I. I don't care how much you've known. If you've come to that point where you realize that, Lord, I want to make, I want to give my heart. I want to stand up. Do it. Conviction. Is there anyone else? I want to invite you to join these men. These ladies. Anyone else? Feel unsure? Stand up. Thank you, Lord. It's taking that first step. How do you know God is speaking to you? You just feel him beating out of your chest right now. That's you. I don't care if you've ever given your heart to the Lord. Do it today. Say, Lord, this is what I need to do today. I need to set things straight with you. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, and look, everything is new. Just there where you stand, place your hand on your heart. 
Just say, thank you, Jesus. I can press through. I can seek your face, Lord. Your word promise that whosoever calls upon your name will be saved. Believe in my heart that you're the only son of God. That you were born in the flesh. You died on a cross. You were born through a virgin birth. Sitting on the right hand of God. Thank you, Lord. You paid the price for me. I'm saved. Child of God. Lord, that I'm filled, sealed, promised Holy Spirit now. Jesus might. Amen. So welcome just to sit. I just want to, everyone that made this decision, I want to pray with you afterwards. Please come, come to me. I just want to lay my hands on you and pray with you. Then if you're sitting in here today in, the, in, the, in this building, you say, I'm so t- under tremendous pressure. Romans 7 says, when I want to do the right thing, I end up choosing the wrong. That's you this, this morning. You always get yourself in a pickle. This is a character building season. And God wants to do something fresh with people in this season. That's you this morning. You say, Lord, I tend to make the right decisions. I might look good on the outside now, but inside I'm struggling. I want you to stand with me this morning. That's you. Thank you, Jesus. care how long you've known the Lord this morning it's between you it's that dire straits is that when you have to press through because God is just pressing upon your heart this morning just stay where you stand just allow the Holy Spirit just lay your hand on your head and the Bible says blessed is the man who blesses him in the land of the living so you can apply that principle just pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, this morning I stand in front of you knowing you are the one that saved me. Thank you, Lord, that it's not through power nor through might, but it's through your Spirit. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you will guide me and lead my heart to stay faithful in the most difficult times turn my eyes to the cross of Jesus and know that he has prevailed against all evil Father deliver me from my own desires and let not my will happen but let your will be done Jesus mighty name Guys, this is part one of pressure. I can't wait to share part two with you guys. Um, This morning, I want to encourage you guys. We say we are in the kingdom of God. It's not the absence of making mistakes. It's in being honest that when we make mistakes and when we fall short of the glory of God, that we go to the one who has paid the price and we learn to continually keep ourselves accountable. Just say, Lord, here I am. Brothers, this is my problem. I'm arrogant. I'm struggling. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. How do you know you're in a bad space? If you've lost your rejoicing. You've lost your ability to raise your hands to the heaven and praise the one who is, was, and will be. So I want to just bless you guys this morning. I want to pray a prayer of blessing over you. I want to trust the Lord of the living to walk with you in such a manner that you will feel Him every, every single day. And if you feel you are out of covenant, I want to tell you, 
Walking with God is not a feeling, it's a knowing. But walking with God that you will know that He is with you until the end of your days. So let's all stand. Father, this morning, I just bless this whole congregation. I thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to see, to know, and to hear. Lord, you've never left nor forsake us. I want to ask, Lord, that this will be such a subtle season of God's kindness. Lord, I, I ask your mercy upon this grounds. I ask your mercy upon this house. I ask your mercy, your peace, and your joy upon each and every individual. I ask, Lord, whatever we do, let us do it with the conviction that God is with us. Let us never lose sight of God's kindness in this season. I bless you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I ask that the Lord will keep you, guide you, that He will be upon you when you sit, when you lie down, when you work. Father, let them experience a measure of the fullness of your Holy Spirit and let them experience your joy that you have placed in their hearts because of the fact that they are saved in Jesus' mighty name. Those who agree, just say amen. This amen. Is, amen. This is more. This is.